goes up 4-2 in the final set. Four and three, the question four is, two. can he serve out the set with two more games, two more good serving games? I don't know, Barry. It's going to be interesting because McEnroe has the ability to play the big points better. Here you see it. That ball coming wide. To look at how far out John has to get on that shot. No way. Good first serve by Borg. 4-2. You were talking about Donald. Love 15. That is almost an impossible ball to handle. Watch it here. Borg lines it up and then whips it cross court. McEnroe will get his racket on it. No way you can play that ball. Look how it pulls him another couple of feet, just the momentum from that ball. This is the game of the set. Good old seventh game, 4-2. Borg leading. John's got to hold serve. Otherwise, he's down 5-2. And really out of the set if he lost yep. this game. Let's see what happens. 15 all, 2-4. Uh-oh. That hurt him. He let that ball if drop. He just four or five inches. But that was enough to net it. It was not a difficult forehand volley for John McEnroe. The ball was in a good position, fairly high. All he had to do was punch it cross court, try to make it a little too good, top of the net. Boy, when you miss those easy ones, it's so frustrating. You really get mad at yourself because you don't mind missing a tough volley when the guys put you in trouble, but the easy ones really, really hurt. That's tremendous. On Borg's racket right here, 15-40, two break points. Bjorn Borg can sneak into the final round here if McEnroe falters. John taking a ton of time here. He is really troubled. And let's see how he plays it. Very low toss, and he's got a second serve. Borg will go for it if McEnroe comes in. Borg. Borg has it with the running forehand, and he goes up. Five games to two here in the final set. Two service breaks. Borg leads five to two. than that. McEnroe's chip and charge. The ball was right on the line. He made a good approach and Borg creased it with a winner. 15 love. Another powerful splitting first serve. He really is splintering the ball. Bjorn Borg, you see the greatness as McEnroe is walking very slowly. He smells defeat. Borg with the big first serve, 30 love. And so Borg has snuck in there to 40 love. Triple match point. The crowd trying to encourage McEnroe, but it's a little late. Three match points to the server. He 
stage one. A little forehand shovel shot. He just scoops it down that line. 40 15. Another match point to Borg. Oh. And another good approach shot by McEnroe, keeping the pressure on. He takes the second okay, ball and comes okay, in with a deep shot. And now right here, let's see if Borg goes with the first big one. He might try to serve an ace here. Serve out the match. 40-30. John saves it. It's good. And McEnroe misses it. And Bjorn Borg has won it. The defending champion, Borg, into the finals. Beats McEnroe here. 6-4, 2-6, 6-2. Great three-set struggle. Awfully good recovery there by Borg in the third set. 6-2 after he lost that middle set to McEnroe, 6-2. And we're going to go down in a moment to Barry McKay at courtside. McKay is down there, hopes to interview the players after this match. Bjorn, nice plan. I know it was a little bit tough coming out here on a strange kind of surface. Did you feel that you were starting to serve better towards the end of this match? Yeah, in the beginning I had uh, a little bit of problems with my serve. But then uh, after like four or five serve game, I got the timing going and I started to serve much better. And like you said, uh, you know, in the beginning it was difficult maybe to move a little bit on, on the surface. But then you got used to it, so it was, it was much better in the end. Bjorn, you've played John a million times and had some great matches. When he won that second set, what was going through your mind? Were you thinking, here he comes again? Well, I think uh, when I was up uh, to uh, zero in the second set, I started to play a little bit, a little bit careful instead to just uh, keep going and really hitting through my shots. So then he started to play a little bit better. Uh, he made some good shots, and then when he won the second set, uh, I thought it might be difficult to win the match, but then I, I got a good start in the third set to break break his serve early, and then I started to play really well. How about this competition, Bjorn? You said that you're going to not play any tournaments uh, anymore. You're sort of retiring, and what, what goes through your mind out here playing this kind of a competition? What, what, what are you trying to prove as a tennis player right now? Well, I just want uh, to do the best of it because uh, it's not too many matches left. Tournament matches I might play uh, in the future, you know, a few exhibitions, but not too many exhibitions, but I'm not going to play any tournaments. And when, when I play this tournament here, I just want to play good tennis, uh, try to win my matches. I don't put any pressure on myself because for the last, like, two, three months, I've not been playing too much tennis. But it's always nicer to, to, to play good tennis. All right, Bjorn, tomorrow, Jimmy Connors or Johan Creek? Any thoughts about Connors if he happens to win? Uh, I think I have to go for Connors uh, in that particular match because he's playing well for the moment, hitting the ball really well. If I should play either one, I have to play well. Uh, you know, I, I look forward to play either one of them tomorrow because uh, I feel pretty relaxed out there because I don't have any pressure, so I hope for a good match. All right, Bjorn, good luck. Thank you. Okay, that's it from courtside, and we'll be right back after this. Well, strangely enough, I'm here with a fan of tennis uh, who's a long way from home, but uh, Dustin, you've seen a lot of tennis. Uh, what did you think of that match we just saw? Well, it was interesting because uh, Borg started tough, and then he lost, I think, seven straight games, and then he, uh, he got his composure back. It seems like it's, it's timing. One player puts... McEnroe put his timing off, and then Borg put McEnroe's timing off. What did you think? <laughs> well, I thought it was a pretty good match. I've seen him play a lot, and uh, it wasn't bad. How about acting in tennis, Dustin? When you watch these two guys compete, any similarities uh, to what you see them doing and what you do? Well, I think in the sense that uh, the... the, uh, the, the what's, uh, what's the word? Uh, Concentration? No. Well, the the uh, the line of being on and off is so thin. Uh, in other words, that when you're told an you're, on day and off day. Or? Well, when you're told you're overacting or you're you know as opposed to being on being real, it's it's the same here. Whether you know the, that moment of hitting the ball is is a very thin line. <laughs> and that's it seems like it's you know it's uh, you can be playing great tennis, but if you're off that much, just a little bit. Yeah. Dustin, you're here in Tokyo doing some promotion. What what brings you to this big city? Uh, promoting Tootsie, a, 
the film that's opening here in about a week. And what's next for you coming up? Well, uh, I don't know. We're working on a couple of projects. One of them is a Kramer two, yeah, but I don't know if it'll be ready. Another one is a, a film about the Tour de France and uh, uh, the 21 day bike race. All right. Do you, do you play any te tennis at all, Dustin, just for exercise and recreation? Yes, it's my sport. It was the only sport I could play in high school because of my height, so I've been playing all my life. That's great. Dustin Hoffman, thanks a million for being with us. You. When you want to play. I'm ready. Anytime you say. I'd love to. Thank you. Okay, Dustin. Okay, that's it from Courtside, and we'll be right back after this.